what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're doing hack the box and we're going to pick where we left up so where we left off so basically today's challenge will be hack the box council and it is part of the intro to binary exploitation track so the first step is starting the instance because we're going to connect to the instance later on and to download the files the attached files uh, contain a copy of the vulnerable binary. So let's jump to my virtual machine and demonstrate how this is gonna work so The first thing as always guys the same drill first we check on the file To understand its nature first it is 64-bit executable file and it is stripped binary stripped binaries are binaries uh, from which the the bugging information are removed which means getting information such as the address of the main function are not going to be that easy now next we check on the protections implemented on the binary we have as you can see guys nx enabled nx enabled means that stack execution is prevented and we have partial redro okay so we have encountered many challenges uh, many buffer overflow challenges similar to this case where nx is enabled and if you remember guys we have followed multiple methods in exploiting buffer overflow when nx is enabled or when the stack is not executable there are multiple methods to do that but today we're going to use a different method we're going to use rope chains and gadgets and gadgets to be able to exploit a binary uh, where the NX is enabled and we know that there is a buffer overflow before we start on the steps let's first open the binary with Ghidra so if you go ahead and open the binary with Ghidra guys we check first on the main function let's go to the main function this is the main function here and we see there is a declaration variable declaration local 18 16 bytes and then we have a function call and then we have a welcome statement and then we have a while loop in the while loop as you can see guys we have f gets so there is a user input that's getting accepted by the program and there is as you can see guys the input is stored in the local 18 file local 18 variable that is declared early, earlier so we have here 16 bytes okay into the local 18 and then there is a function being called it takes local 18 as an argument let's take a look at this function so this function takes the local 18 as an argument and then starts a series of else else's as you can see we have many else's here that checks on the user input the first check if the user input is or equals to flag so we use string comparison as you can see here to um, compare the user input with uh, specific strings here the first one here as you can see flag if the user input is equal to flag as you can see we have uh, the program accepts user input again it asks the user to enter um, uh, another series of input but this time it is 48 bytes so remember that local 18 was 16 bytes so how come now it's going to be able to accept 48 bytes so that's where the buffer overflow lies here so the buffer overflow guys to trigger the buffer overflow we have to enter a flag as the user input after entering a flag we're gonna provide the binary or supply the binary with the user input that exceeds the allocated uh, or the allowed uh, the, the allowed limit allocated for the local 18 which was 16 bytes so if you enter 50 bytes 55 we're gonna go a segmentation fault <coughs> and then if these are inputs equal to HOF right we're gonna get this reg register yourself for HTTP hold of fame enter your name and then we ha the program accepts user input again it takes 16 bytes and stores this in this section of the memory this is the address <coughs> and then as you can see here guys we can enter commands ls it will list it will print out these uh, words and then we have a system call that returns the date so now how are we gonna build the rope chain so let's go back 
Drop chain consists first of the padding. The padding is the offset. We're gonna we're gonna have to trigger a buffer overflow, uh, sorry, segmentation fault, and then we find the offset. The same drill every time. Hit a segmentation fault, find the offset. Let's do that. So here we launch the binary using um, GTP, okay, and then we create a pattern of 50 bytes. That's my first pattern. I run the program, okay, and then the program asks me for an input. So I know from the code, we know from the code that if we enter a flag, we're going to be able to enter uh, an input that can be above. 16 bytes namely we can enter 48 bytes and above so we enter the provided um, uh, Input but it was 50 bytes. So we're gonna have to enter 48 bytes exactly to cause segmentation fault So we cause segmentation fault here and if you take a look at the registers our Objective here is to find the offset the same drill. So we locate the stack pointer and we locate the base pointer so we have multiple methods to find the offset. You can get back, guys, you can get back to the videos or to the playlist that I have on buffer overflows. There are many ways to do that. I explain that. So we're going to take the first three letters here and use pattern search. Pattern search. And as you can see, it points to 24 bytes. That is the offset. So we found the first piece of the rope chain. Let's go back to the rope chain. That's the first piece. We found the padding. The next thing we need to find is the gadget address. So what's going to happen, guys, the gadget address, if we are able to find it, it, it will enable us to execute or to point the RDI okay, to the stack. So basically, the gadget will pop the stack content inside RDI and then create a return. So that's what we want. From the gadget if we are able to find the address of the gadget we're going to pop the stack inside the rdi now what's the content of the stack it's going to be bin sh all right let's now find the gadget address so to find the gadget address there's a very useful tool to do that it is rope gadget okay dash dash binary and then we give it the binary name if we scroll down, we want to look for pop RDI because we want to uh, pop the stack inside RDI. So we're going to have to find this. Let's scroll down, find pop RDI, and this is it. So here it is pop RDI, then return. This is the address. So we take a note of the address because we can use that address in the exploit code. Let's go back. Now we have found two pieces the padding and the gadget address. The third thing we want is to store bin sh in a memory address that we can control. Let's go back now, see if we can find a memory address that we can control. So if we go back to the code, going up, here there is a memory address. So if we provide HOF or HOF as user input, the program will allow us to enter 16 bytes okay, and store the, source the 16 bytes inside this address. So now we have an address in the stack that we can control here. So we're going to trigger or we're going to supply the, the binary okay, with HOF and then we're going to send bin sh to be stored at this address. Hence, we have an address that we can control on the stack and contains bin sh. So we already know how to do that. We're going to implement that in the in the in the uh, in the exploit code. And lastly, we have to make the system call. Now, finding a system call is easy, but it is there for us in the program. There is a system call here, very clear. All we have to do is to find the address of a system call. Okay. Now it is here. We have it on the code. And if you click on system, this is the address here, memory address. We can take a note of this memory address as well. And therefore, we have completed the ROP chain. It is ready to be executed in the in in uh, execute in the um, exploit code. Let's go now and check the exploit code. So let's see here. Okay, 
I'm gonna right click and open with VIM, open with mouse pad, way better. All right. First, we define the connection parameters. Now, this is in case you are exploiting buffer overflow remotely. Okay. Now, some uh, sometimes you might be doing that on a local machine. Okay, such as if you have compromised the machine uh, after information gathering, after you have gone through the cyber kill chain, you have compromised the machine, and then you have found a binary that might be vulnerable to buffer overflow. Then in an exploit, you're gonna have to remove these. Okay. You're going to just have to define the uh, binary name here. So because we have here, uh, because it's a remote BOF, we're going to have to define the connection parameters, connect to the target. Here we define the gadget address that we found earlier. And then the first thing we want is to store bin sh guys in an ad memory address that we control, remember. So we've sent HOF and the payload that we will send to the application is bin sh. So these lines will send BinSH to the memory address we talked about earlier, this one. So HOF here, we're going to be able to send 16 bytes and store 16 bytes here. Okay. And then, and then we send flag as a user input. If we send a flag, remember, when we send a flag, we have the opportunity to cause segmentation fault. So after we send flag, it's the time where we uh, craft the payload. So the first component of the payload, remember, it is the padding. So we have 24. The offset was 24. So we send 24. We send the pattern here. Time is 24. And then we send the gadget address. And the third component was, remember, it is the memory address that we control on the stack. It is the address that contains or that stores the bin sh we sent earlier. And lastly, it will be the system call. The, the, the memory address of the system call was already shown in the code. Doing it one more time for you. So this is the system address. And this is the memory address of the system. We just write the address in the code. And then after we construct the payload, we send the payload uh, in place of the uh, awaiting flag value by the binary and we receive interactive. If we execute the code, so I execute the code, perform the connection, connect it to the binary, and then we have the shell. And that was the flag. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later.